thought it was like much more of a surfer boy sort of thing to me, but okay then. I mean, the real question is, do they realize that Compton is literally not that far away? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, we do have uh, JW and the rest of them here on Fnatic up against Team Quest and Mark, as people have been saying, questionable, question mark, TQM. A lot of names coming out of... Uh, out of this uh, this one sort of in you know a little bit of indecisiveness about the team or the organization they're going to be joining. Inferno is up first, and uh, there was a little bit of a mixed feeling on the desk. Um, what do you what do you make of it? Fnatic picked this map. Are they also going to win it? I don't think so, Anders. I'm going to side with Quest and Mark on this one. I think that they are going. If it if times get rough. And fifth hit it, right? If time gets rough, I don't know if Fnatic are going to be able to pull through, whereas on question mark side, they've got a leader, they've got Kerrigan, they've got experience, and they've got a system. Whereas for Fnatic, it just seems a lot more random to me, much more reliant on just hard fragging. So if fragging isn't there, are they going to be able to grind, grind out rounds? That's the question. At least Fnatic will be able to get the start that they want. So they could go over to that CT side, get the get the air quotes easier side to start with, and put some pressure on question mark here to begin. The Fnatic is getting a little bit fired up as well. I saw Dennis there just, uh, you know, clenching his fists and doing a bit of a shout towards uh, TQM. So, yeah, everyone is in a good mood here for this best of three game. You're siding with uh, the, the Danish uh, side here. I mean, I don't know. The way that Crims has been playing lately, they get yeah. to start CT side as well, and Olaf Meister. Crimson so how Olaf, on man. this one? I mean, they, they're still one of the very best B defensive duos out there. Yeah. No doubt about it. And what's crazy is that we've learned uh, that uh, Crims doesn't even want to play B side, bro. He wants to, so it's like they're keeping him on B because he's just that good. And really, he is one of the very best on the B side. So we'll have to see how uh, Question Mark decide to handle that if they want to go towards the B side to start or if they want to go and test the A side defense. And there is already a little bit of a shift here. What is this? Olafmeister going towards A mid with the USP, and he is lethal with the pistol. So maybe just looking for a headshot to start. Oh, this is a bold move here from Fnatic. I mean, if they get the early pick, I mean, right now they're at least forcing TQM to waste a little bit of time here, but they are gonna group up and the Glocks are actually gonna come out even at range. And all of Meister here going uh, pretty low on health early on. So a little bit of time wasted, but also a little bit of damage being put into Crimson and all of both. Yeah, actually, that's not really not going to help things here. And now they still have some nades. They have a flash and a smoke. Smoke could be used to block off CT spawn over here on B site where Flush is currently playing. And then Karim's being so low on the site, he really wouldn't have much time while you were to live, basically. They just swarm him down, question mark. But at least at the 50 second mark, it looks like question mark want to head towards the A site. And yeah, there's the smoke Ooh. going out, blocking off. Well, they're actually setting up to block off long. It's going to be a short wrap. Yeah, this is very unorthodox. Nice opening. Sit going to be taking down Olaf in the pit. JW in a lot of trouble, and he's not going to make it out. Neither will Dennis. He, they both dropped to Carrigan there, and Crimson Flusher. It's one of those calls where, like, what could you possibly do at this point in time? Nice jump in as well from Dupree. The fact that he catches the arch of the doorway means that his the, the sort of the arc of his jump is capped, so mm -hmm. he's not airborne for as long, and he just gets right in there. It's a bit of a cheeky move if you want to make yourself a bit unpredictable. Crims, well, not a lot he could do right here. Yeah, a scary moment for Crims. That flash completely ineffective, but he's so low on HP. Fizz go charging through, and Device will pick up a kill. Nearly a team ace. Kerrigan getting two frags in the pistol. Everybody else, apart from Cajun, really getting a piece of the action here. But yeah, JW tried to could, but... There's just too many bodies. Both of these teams are so very good on the T side of just running in as a unit, as a group. And so there's there's just two, three guys with pistols facing you every time you take a peek. And one of them's going to hit that headshot, as we saw right there. So everything going according to plan here for question mark to start. And now this is what I'm talking about, that rough start for Fnatic. Are they going to be able to keep their cool and just grind rounds once they get to buy rifles? Well, they, they have been known in the past to be one of these teams that will try and pick up these rounds. Just like Envy, they, they had a history of being very good with the CSAT 75. Um, I feel like Envy sort of pulled ahead in these statistics, right? They, they win more of these follow-up rounds. I think that Fnatic still have got it in them, and you know, JW with the Max 7 as well. Uh, it could be a quick way for the Swedish side to get back into the game early on here, see if they can pick something up. Flusher playing the archway, he's going to spot a couple of people. Dennis on the other side, if Flusher had put in that flashbang or that grenade, maybe that could have actually resulted in something, but Dennis is still waiting. Yeah, this is just 
This is just question mark. So, yeah, exactly. Some confusion in the ranks. They're putting a focus on mid. Dennis is going to peek. He nearly gets a second kill. Dupree just barely far enough away to avoid the one-shot kill. And Device takes a bullet to the face of Top Banana as well. Crims has already rotated to this B site. It's a three-on-three, three, but both Dupree and Device being so low really isn't going to help things here for question mark. And Device figures that out as Crims peeks out from construction and removes him from the map. So with 30 seconds left, they're actually going to rotate back to A. And this is based off of Dupree holding his own in mid, taking out yeah. JW. Oh, you're exactly right. The good news is that it's Sip who's got, um, you know, almost 90 health left here, and he's been so good recently. So to have him left alive here with the armor, with the rifle and everything else, definitely not a bad sign. They're going to put the bomb down inside the site here. Uh, means Dupree can still help out, and they don't have any grenades apart from the smoke here on Flusher to try and get Dupree zoned out of this uh, 2v2, which is what they need. They also don't have a diffuse kit currently picked up, so time is running quite heavily against them. Yeah, and it a really smart choice here from Flusher. It's a likely spot that question mark would try and hold from. And so now it comes down to them just wrapping onto this site, looking to take out the man who's defending on the site itself. And Zipnix finds a lucky headshot, just spraying full on. He gets Crims, and now it will be down to Dupree and Flusha both. And Flusha thinking, I just don't have the time. He doesn't have a kit, and the headshot is there from Dupree as well. So he won't even live through to save that AK. Fantastic job from Fnatic, though, to make it a very expensive round for question mark. That's really not going to inspire, conf inspire confidence on the Danish side if they've lost so many rifles just versus CZs and armor. Yeah, but the Fnatic don't feel that bold either. It's, this is one of those things where I would almost sort of wonder if Envy would just try and go for it just because, yeah, I mean, if you've done so much damage, if you do it one more time, maybe you, maybe you make it work. Not going to be for Fnatic though, and um, it would be a big risk to run, I, I would... I would really question that a little bit. Nice boost here to look over the fountain inside of the B-bomb site. Molotovs rain in. They are coming for them here, but um, this USP doing a little bit of damage here, and they are not realizing just yet. TQ, I'm very slow to pick up on what's going on here. And Kerrigan finally getting a one kill, and Olofmeister picking up a second shot. Cause Reigns hits a third one as well, and Kerrigan has gone down now. Finally, Olofmeister has dispatched off, but it might have been too late at this point in time. Two versus three. Two versus three, but superior firepower for question mark. So they have the two AKs. If they keep their cool, they should be able to work this out and get their hands on that bomb once again. Flush is trying to close in. And he's going to get fended off here by Dupree. And good job by Flush also to just back up and keep that pressure on Fnatic. If he were to die, it'd be a much easier situation here for the Danes. Zipnix finds a way out. He takes out JW. And there's the peak from Flusha, but Dupree, he's just waiting for it. No Kevlar means they fall to aim punch, and it makes life a bit more difficult here for Fnatic. But Dennis, he's an excellent pistol player. He's got 12 bullets total to work with here, and he needs to find that shot. They don't quite know where he is yet either. He hasn't shot himself, but that one shot, that one single solitary shot's gonna give it away. And now he just needs a huge headshot and he's not gonna get it. Dupree there, basically to lock it down for question mark. Scary, really scary, right? That's two rounds in a row where they're very low. I mean, this round for all of Meister is brilliant, but um, I am a bit surprised that they didn't realize what was going on there, TQM, because that is, it's an unusual position, but it's not completely unknown. Um, and. They to look like they took a long time before they, they even thought about it. They had, yeah, they, they, it really does look like they had no idea where they were getting shot from. And that's also the power of the silencer. So good use of the uh, of the USP there by Olofmeister. You don't get that tracer. If he'd had a P2000 or a P250, it would never have worked. They'd have spotted him immediately. So nice little surprise move. All three of these rounds, well, the two follow-up rounds, that is, have been really difficult for the Danes. Close rounds, and they don't have a whole lot of money. So this is Fnatic's big, t big chance now. To just turn this map on its head, or this half, get that strong start, force question mark into a force buy situation, or an eco. Yeah, we're still at plus a minute, and they have one smoke left on the Fnatic sign, and that's obviously a result of the fact that they just don't have the money for it. So um, the Swedes are usually very, very good at keeping the, the smokes alive and, and making sure they don't use them prematurely, but... When you don't have them, you don't have them, and that's gonna, that means the slow style from question mark is going to be really annoying and really hard to deal with. And uh, on the terrorist side, if you look at the amount of grenades that are still left here, they could do whatever they want at this point, whatever execute they're looking for. Once this smoke disappears at top banana, then everything is open. I think that was a flash that went in, but Crims missed the jump up onto the cart. So when you have limited resources like this for Fnatic, when you don't have nades, every nade counts. And well, Flush is going to get lucky. Flash in, and he gets the spray right onto Kerrigan through that smoke blind. 
And it is going to be the big push here onto the B side. They need to move, though, question mark. Good anti-flash to stop them short. Zip next to Meister, but there is a rotation. Flush is here to support Crims. Crims alive at the back of the site. They line up, but he's only going to get the one. Flush, however, will take out Zipnix. Bomb is planted, but man advantage going into this retake here. And JW what? right on the edge of the smoke. He doesn't take out Dupree. How does he not win that fight? That's the big question. He should have the advantage now. Device in the back lines. Long range spray takes the kill on Dennis. And Flusher's just a couple of shots away from death. Which well, Device spraying, holding it down. He's almost going to get it. But Flusher with a triple instead. No kit, but he'll have enough time. And that is definitely a very important round here for Vanati. Again, it's very, very close. But um, this time the Swedes come out on top. And it's a much needed round for them. They could not afford to let this one go. Now, double for Device. A triple for Flusha at the end. And well, Flusha, good to see him falling into his usual clutch role for Fnatic. I mean, he, for a long time, he was the man you wanted to be alive at the end of the round for Fnatic to get the job done. But Device, you really do need to see him lock that kind of round down for question mark. So a little frustrating to see that. He has been a little, I mean, He's had some moments recently where in certain maps he hasn't shown up for the team. So if uh, the question mark are going to win this series, they really need Device to come through big with the headshots, the big rounds that are going to turn it, well, towards Denmark. And right now, well, just looking at the buy here from question mark, they're really trying to force this. They know that that was a close round for Fnatic, that Fnatic don't have a lot of money. So now we get it, we're going to get into that slugging match, Anders, where it's just going to go back and forth each round. I feel like, especially on CT side Inferno, Device usually has like a really, really good game. So they're, they're going to need a lot of that. Nice uh, prediction there from Crims. The device is going to be gone here. It's a bit of a force up round for uh, for question mark, and it's based off of the mm -hmm. fact that they obviously got the bond down and the fact that they killed four people in that last round. So they know Fnatic's economy is bad. They want to keep the pressure on, and that's what they're doing. Two AKs in play. I'm surprised that Device doesn't get the job done there versus Crims, though. Because Crims always jumps up on car like that. That's one of his go-to moves to check bottom when a smoke is down right in front of the car like that. So Device, I don't think he he didn't have one of the AKs, so that might have made the difference there. Well, no, never mind. He did have an AK. So, what am I saying? No, no, I, he had an AK. So, for I'm, him not to be, you know, aware of that. No, I'm pretty sure he just had the Tech 9. I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. Um, I think it was Cajun and Dupree who had the other two. Yeah, that's not right, makes sense, but only... Cajun's got devices AK, so that's odd. Whatever. Uh, maybe they dropped it. Oh, Crims with a nice double spray down. They line up for him, and Sip is going to take one in return, and Bomb is going to go down. So, I mean, it's not a useless round, but now the question will be kind I don't think they can win this round, question mark. Fnatic should be able to mount a retake here, but the amount of kills that happen in favor of question mark here are very important. Preferably another two. Uh, one is not going to be quite good enough. We'll see how much the Swedes can do. They are rotating in, and they're a little bit slow here. Carrigan in the back lines. He's almost going to get all of now. It's on Sip, and he's just going to make a run for it. So this is a very good round for Fnatic. They let go of the bomb, and that's it. Everybody else gets to survive. And yeah, that's a bit disappointing. I actually think it would have been worth it for uh, for for the terror side here to have gone for a bunch of kills. Yeah, and Anders, I mean, yeah, there it is. He only had the Tech Nine. Yeah. So, it seems like he was on it, but he wasn't able to get the shot off. And Crims, just a hero round from him. He died, but he took three players with him, and that just made all the difference for Fnatic in that round. And, you know, you're right to mention Crims at the beginning. You know, that B site, Crims is a rock. He just always seems to get something out of it. He's so consistent getting frags and making it expensive to go there for their opponents. So, question mark. They're going for a bit of a quasi-buy based off of this AK save from Zipnix. You can see a Tech-9 Kevlar helmet picked up for Kerrigan. Handful of nades to work with as well. Just actually smokes for a full execute. And it doesn't look like Question Mark are going to waste any time. Excellent HE and the Molotov as well. And it's a slaughter in mid. They don't even make it past. Question Mark, they get completely shut out of the sight. Fnatic not falling for it this time. It's a confidence on Flusher here as well. Just having the C set. And if they can get all these kills, he can pick up a rifle as well. That's a save from Flusher making a double for himself and device. Well... He's alone, and again, damage here is important. Flusher finally goes down, but he only gives up armor, more or less. Oh, tricky. They need more than this. <laughs> they knew, they knew. This no. is a big problem. This is two rounds in a row where Fnatic gets to survive with four members after having, you know, some a very, very close uh, fourth round. It's like at the end of that round as well, just so many nades saved. So it's not even like Fnatic are having to tap deep into their bank. 500 bucks spent by Olaf, 300 by Crims. I mean, the money is going to really start getting out of control. If they have another solid round here versus uh, Question Mark, if Fnatic are able to just survive with three players, this is where it gets really scary. Nice nade to bottom mid, but KGB manages to get into Amazon fast enough. He's not going to take any damage from it. 
Bit of a grenade out, some uh, to just delay the uh, Danish side a bit, but I actually already pushed through it. They're just going to be up in apartments, and you can tell that Dennis thought he maybe heard someone up there, or, or JW did, so they are aware that they've lost apartments control. We'll see what Question Mark do with it, because it, there are so many options once you have this apartments here, and the, right now, I think, on the terrorist side, they're, just, they're hoping for someone to come and peek them. You can kind of tell across the board, the only place that could possibly happen right now probably be Banana. Everywhere else, there's a bit of a standstill. Mm. And that bomb being all the way back in T-spawn right now, we're going to have to see the break here. Device is trying to make as much noise as possible up at top. Banana just to keep Crims pinned here. Flush is rotating over as well. This is all going to according to plan here for question mark. Because now they have two players over on that B side. Flush is still holding in CT. He hasn't fully committed. And he's going to start working his way back towards A, it looks like. But the push is already going to come through. 35 seconds left. And here we go. Question mark. It's going to be the straight up run onto the A side. And Olaf Meister in the perfect position to catch them out. The flash is ineffective. And he, well, to pre and Cajun bring it back. And some finds a third kill. But then right through the door. Flush is there to spray down Cajun. And it will be the two on two. Question mark. They need to get this bomb planted. If they're going to be successful, Fnatic are out of grenades right now, and there's still a smoke here on Dupree, so that's going to go up again, and that's going to be very, very annoying. You can see Flush is waiting for it. Now he realizes that's time wasted because it just gets re-smoked, and they have to fall back around quad here. This is a very important round for both teams. Fnatic have a bit of a bank. They can afford to lose this round, but not a lot more than that. Dupree being annoying in the pit and distracting them at the moment. Device inside is a great crossfire set up here, and they're going to get simultaneous kills, and Question Mark playing that one very well. You could see Olaf Meister and Lil Pit there. He wasn't ready for the second man coming around archway and that might have been some some miscommunication or just maybe they weren't they didn't have the, like a count on how many people were there because he checks sees no one and then dies yeah cajun right on the edge of that smoke you really have to give it to dupree as well it works out perfectly because he's playing from pit he's watching watching short and he spots both players so that gives it up completely for Fnatic at that point they establish the crossfire and then it's shooting eggs in a bar uh, sh shooting eggs in a barrel fish in a barrel for a question mark in the end so in many ways, shooting eggs in a barrel will be even easier. Right? <laughs> they, don't, they don't move at all. Mine, mine's still working. Just a bit of a different picture. JW with a nice pick off as well in the beginning of this round. The device to go down, and um, yeah, it's always a good way to start here. If we bring up the scoreboard, Fnatic's money is going to be uh, sort of low as well, you can tell. So for them to win this round is very, very important. The, the sort of early battle for, for sort of the, the, the beginning of the of the half here is still going on. No one has like decisively won it. Mm -hmm. um, because question mark is on the terrorist side, the rounds matter a lot more to them. So, you know, 4-3 is a very good scoreline for them right now. But the fact is that if they get, if they start losing now, they can still, Fnatic can still gain a lot of momentum and speed. Exactly. Once they manage to get those, uh, those big nade counts going. Right, this time around, it looks like question mark. They want to venture back towards that. Krim's holding up close, just holds Mouse 1. Great spray from him. He takes out Kerrigan. No chance to reply from Question Mark. And then Olaf Meister, it's the tag team duo over here on the B side. Flush, uh, no, JW's rotated in, and they just ran right into a blender. Question Mark, completely ineffective. Cajun B will be able to bring it back and at least remove Krim's from the map. The shot from JW's a miss, but he somehow gets out in one piece. And now it's down to Olaf Meister and JW at least. There is a man pushing up Banana as well. That's going to be Flusha and Cajun. He's stuck. No way for him to figure out that he could run towards that A side. Of course, he doesn't have the bird's eye view. And well, that was that was a, a surprisingly ineffective round coming out from question mark. Crims and Olaf just never let them even get close to that site. Again, they killed one man and four survive. And th this is really, really important. If Fnatic, th there's three rounds now where Fnatic, when they've won them, they've won them with four people staying alive, right? There's only the one clutch where Flusher was left alive. The other three rounds that they have, it's been four members surviving. That has a huge impact on the outcome of this game. If if Fnatic got down to a one-on-one -on -one every time, then they, they, they're they going to be broke. This is very, very important right now. So TQM, they've, they've got to sort of try and inflict more damage even when they're not winning. And they're not really being successful in that. Oh, JW throws away the AWP. Is that to make sure Sip doesn't pick it up in case he dies? I love how fast this guy thinks. Yeah, that's incredible, right? And then to actually manage to pick up the kill himself, like full MLG play, falling off the balcony. Hollywood, man, you know, he's close to it, JW, he knows. But that is going to be so frustrating for question mark. The who decide to go for a buy. Yeah. What is this? They, it's this it, is the hail mary, Anders. Well, yeah, but again, they, that's four people surviving in one round, five in, in in this round. Obviously, they kill nobody in the eco round. They know they've got to keep the fanatic economy low, and they wanna they wanna execute right now. And I wish, I hope they go to the A bomb night. It's time to give up on trying to break Crimson all of Meister or Red Beef. It's not going to happen. It really, it really has been completely ineffective. 
they're too good. Now let's see, now A side has seen a bit more success, so they might be checking out over there. JW will get caught, but the perfect flash and flush is there to save JW's life. And that was from the pit. So Flusha, he's still got that key position. He's going to be keeping an eye on apartment. JW's there to double up on that. Takes the quick peek, doesn't spot anybody. And once again, question mark, find themselves down a man. They have done damage to Fnatic at least. JW, Low, yep. Crims, Olaf, you know, they've, they've been tagged. But they still need to actually get onto a site. Two smokes, two mollies. That's what they have. And some good bullets there from Cajun. Flusha also being tagged up a little bit. Some Defensive flashbang is going to come out. They've got the bomber. They're bringing it actually back towards the middle with about 35 seconds left. The only guy holding is Crimson. He's used his last uh, smoke just a couple of seconds ago here. Smoke going to go towards CT spawn. That's right where Crimson is standing. He's going to have to fall back instead. Cr gets the kill on device and spots the bomb as well. Crimson is just so good on this bomb site. Now he has to stay alive. This is the most important thing right now. If he gets a kill, that's great. But living is really what matters right now. 15 seconds left and they have to get rid of Crimson to get the bomb down. He hits a headshot on carry. And now he's done everything he has to do. JW here with a headshot as well, strafing in. Cajun going to go down. And that was Dennis with the final kill here. What a round. That that was looking very good for question mark. They push in. There's 30 seconds left. The smoke is gone. It's just Crims there. And they still can't break him. Yeah, this man is just... Well, I mean, as far as this, yeah, the score is concerned, basically, it's between Olaf Meister, Flush, and Crims right now. They're just racking up kills. The rest of them, JW, Dennis Meister, they're, they're catching up. They're not lagging too far behind, but every time we go to that B site, it's just the Crims show. And then it's, it's, and then it's you know, the supporting actor, Olaf Meister, Flush, uh, doesn't realize Crims is always there to just be that anchor. So now it's just going to be a quasi buy coming out from question mark. They got the plant in the last round, but not quite enough for a full buy where they could get a whole lot of nades to work with. So they're going to go just for, you know, a bit of a mix here. Tech 9s, P250s. And it looks like they're going to go straight out of apartments. Fun play here. This is going to be a little different. Device and Carrigan are going to be pressuring mid. And then on the signal, all three are just going to come crashing out of the apartments. And now it's all going to come down to whether Dennis, Dennis can hold the line. And he will for a moment. He takes one with him at least. They shouldn't be fighting JW here. I have no idea why they want to go try and go for that fight. They've got a four on three. The bomb is about to go down. They should just stay away and leave Fnatic to try and get closer here. Because it's not going to be an easy retake right now for the Swedish side either. Rifle picked up as well, and AK on Dupree, and even some guy, you know, who's that? That's Cajun up in apartments, waiting in bedroom. All of Meister, very hard for him to know that's happening. And now that he runs away, he gives up the fact that they're not aware, and this should be a really good flank here for Cajun. This should not be possible for Fnatic. This comes down to him committing. Yeah, he's going to rotate in real quick now that the shots have begun. Slows it down, but this is it. The big damage moment. Takes out Crims. Now a two on two, but now it's down to Cajun. Somehow his team gets wiped out. They pick up together, and is there enough time? They're going to get on the bomb there just in the nick of time here. Fnatic, incredible. A two, well, three on four retake, and look, somehow they make it work. Look at the facial expressions on Fnatic after a round on like Flusha. that. They, that should not have been possible. That's a huge giveaway here for, for TQM. Uh, not not managing to play the time and not and and failing that if they wanted to fight, not managing to help each other out. So this is the problem, right? If they committed to fight, then they would have probably set up some good crossfires. If they committed to waiting, then they would have all waited. Instead, they did something sort of halfway in between. And what happens is instead, sort of half of them are fighting, half of them are hiding, which means the people are fighting have no backup. The people are hiding. Well, they get found anyway because their teammates are dead, and then it's it's all bad. That was yeah, some poor communication there, and that's gonna that's gonna come back to haunt them here. Seven to four, Fnatic's economy is looking much better now than it was just a couple of rounds ago. And that's a big problem. Now TQR, we're in a position where they got to win consecutive rounds to force an eco. And that's going to be really tough here. We could we could end this first half here with Fnatic having a very good run in spite of what it looked like early on. This is where they, ha they have to do it the hard way. That's what it boils down to here. And the way that they've decided to change things up is now Device has an AWP. So he'll be looking to get the picks going. Crims. Wow. Fresh Smoke goes down top banana, and Krim still has his. He still has an incendiary as well. This is going to be insanely difficult, but it is going to be a straight split here. It looks like they want to try and go through Arch and wrap onto the B site, but Flush is there and Olaf there to hold the line as well, and it's just not happening for question mark. They keep getting smacked in the face wherever they decide to go. Krims is now going to get to put down his smoke, and this is a nightmare for question mark. 30 seconds left, and they have a single, they have two flashes, and Zipnix is going to set it up here for his teammates, or are they just going to try and walk their way through? What a bad idea! I mean, you have to take a risk, yes, but then against Crims, he just rocks them, and JW's there for the final kill on Zipnix. Crims couldn't have had better timing there. Just catches them as they exit the smoke, lined up.
Speaking of timing, that shot from Flusher through the smoke was pretty ridiculous as well, but um, yeah, this is bad. Again, the look at the money, 14,000 on JW. Yeah. The, this is, it's ridiculous how many people survive from Fnatic every round. The rounds that TQM win, well, the one round that they won after the pistol, are, um, are close, but all the other rounds that Fnatic end up winning, they seem to be very, very decidedly in their favor. That is definitely a problem. JW opening up on Cajun, and yeah, things are getting rough right now for the Danish side. An 11 4 finish would not, I think, be good enough. I think that's that's Fnatic coming away with too much. No, that would be exactly that. We need at least 10 5. Nine's ideal. If it goes 11 4, I think Fnatic are going to have too much wiggle room because it's also been their CT sides that have looked a little wonky lately for Fnatic. The T sides, they just keep getting in their opponents' faces with great entry frags, just taking those duels, hunting them out, and winning them. So, question mark really need to be messing with Fnatic here, but it's just not happening. At least there's a trade. Flusher hangs around on the wrong side of the smoke a little bit too long with the JW. Gets a fantastic flick onto Kerrigan, shuts him down at Arch. There are still two players alive here for question mark, and both of them making their way. Well, one through apartments, one through short, but Dennis is still boosted up here. Zipnix takes out JW, but Dennis does not give his way his position. He's still hanging around, and he gets perfect timing. And that's the bomb. It couldn't go any worse for question mark. Yeah. Dennis is now camping the bomb with 30 seconds left. The Vice, he just has to get into some wonky spray battle here and hope he gets lucky. Hey, that was never going to happen. 9-4 here for the Swedish side. And I I kind of wish that TQM would be a bit faster on their executes um, when it comes to the safe bomb side. I feel like they need to speed it up a bit. Um, try and see if you can't just bully your way in through Archway um, and, and maybe make that work. Bit of a timeout here, tactical timeout it seems for TQM. Mm -hmm. you know, they're going to be stopping this. I mean, right now, money. Well, I guess you know it's more a question of shutting down the momentum for Fnatic than um, than anything else. They've lost so many rounds in a row. Question mark that they could probably go for a quasi buy again right here. With Tech Nines, Kevlar, maybe a Deagle for Device, see if or for Dupree rather, see if they can get anything done there. I mean. Kerrigan and Cajun have really been struggling as far as the performance is concerned. We're not seeing the big plays from them whatsoever. It's really coming down to Dupree, Device, and Zipnix. And really just Dupree, the only guy in double digits right now for the Danes. So, what are you thinking at this point? Because it's just like, okay, you go up to Banana, you, you keep trying to get onto the B site, you're just yeah. not able to break that impregnable D rims. Forget about that B bomb site. Um, I, I would, I mean, look at what Envy do when they're in this position. This is, this is the go-to play for Envy. Whenever they lose this many rounds in a row and they feel like they're in some trouble, they will um, they will set up in second mid. They'll throw their their sort of standard smokes towards archway and towards library, and then they will try and just execute towards that. And they have a lot of different ways to run it. Sometimes they run to the A bomb side. Sometimes they run through arch instead and sort of go in towards the B bomb side. But either way, I think I think an execute towards the the A side of the map with with a lot of smokes is far, is preferable right now. I'd much rather have question mark do that, and I, I hope they, they forget about this uh, this B bomb site. Yeah, that or try and challenge uh, Krim somehow earlier on. Really try and get through that smoke at Banana. Play for the power play rather than just you know trying to play for time because Krim at this point feels so secure that he's holding on to smokes and incendiaries up until like 30 seconds left into the round. That's unacceptable. You need to find a way to get those smokes out of his hand earlier if you're going to challenge that site somehow. I mean, if you look at why Crims is so good, apart from 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 like the timing and and the kit and the, the aim and everything else, there is like another component that that he shares with someone like Neo, for instance. Mm -hmm. It's just he's hard to kill. You know, he doesn't put himself in a position where he where you can sort of easily get a frag on him. Because if it was the case that every once in a while they could go on banana and take a fight and win it against Crims, that'd be amazing. But Crims doesn't take those kind of fights. He generally he's very like elusive, and that means you can waste so much time even like trying to do it. It's it's it must be very annoying. It's a real mystery. It, and it really doesn't seem like Question Mark have figured out, you know, the pattern quite yet. Although Olafmeister kind of waiting around on, on Speedway that one round might be a little bit of an indication that Crims is playing it solo over there. But then because Flusher plays B as well sometimes, it still might be a little bit of a wonder. But what is going to be what is going to be the play here? For question mark. I mean, JW has his AWP. Fresh Smoke goes down to top mid, though, so he's just going to try and play the angle here, hope that somebody walks into his crosshairs. And yeah, this is a quasi buyout of question mark. They haven't spent everything, so they're still trying to play on the next round as well. Well, they've got control of second mid so far, and Sip is actually setting up for exactly the kind of smoke that I was hoping for, so we'll see if it is going to be that kind of execute. 
It goes in all the way towards Arch. JW hiding in the corner. Actually, it was a little bit further up than I wanted it. And Flusher is now playing all the way in pit. Molotov goes up here. Can they root him out? They're going to be quick. And it is a fast exit. Go towards the A bomb site now. Fnatic wrapping in, trying to see if they can get a good angle here. Nice grenade. Rains down on Dennis. Fnatic improvising a boost on the other side of the smoke here. Very creative play, but they don't necessarily have the time to try and do this stuff. Olaf going to get the one frag in here, but TQM, they have a good position. Olaf Meister getting a second kill, though. That's going to make it scary. He's got that pressure on, and now he's got the incendiary as well, as well into the back of the site. That's going to force Cajun B to rotate around, and the press comes in from Dennis. He decides to launch himself in there. Kills going question mark's way, but JW's able to battle in, and Krims is there on the site. It's on device, and it's just not going to be good enough. JW's going to find the kill, and Krims just barely has time to defuse. Another issue coming forward for a question mark. They make the right play because yeah. Fnatic did what I thought they would do, or, or, or at least they kind of predicted some kind of play towards Banana from question mark. They put three guys over there early on. Anti-rush nades went out. They were preparing for some kind of pressure to come out from the Danes there. And instead, question mark, they just blindsided Fnatic by all, all going out of apartments pretty much. That's unheard of. So great strat from question mark. It's just how, do are, they, how are they not successful in holding afterwards in all that chaos? They really need to be landing those shots. I mean, it's a combination of having after plant positions, especially with how the bomb was planted. That made it sort of very hard for them to, to do anything. Um, they ended up having like, what, three or two people inside and they run into the auto sniper here. That's not a good start. This looks like an 11-4 finish in favor of Fnatic. What was that, Flusher? <laughs> okay. A little too excited there. Just a little bit. Wait. Ah, uh, yeah, I was wondering. JW in apartments, he runs into Dupree. Yeah, this is just insult to injury. Fnatic going for a SCAR 20 on Inferno. Just showing, question mark, yeah, we have no respect for you, actually. Everything's going our way. You haven't figured out how to deal with our Inferno hold, and we're just going to keep smacking you. So a two-on-four situation now with Zipnix and Kerrigan, both alive. Last two here. They've got that crossfire in mid, hoping that Fnatic are going to make a mistake. But Fnatic, so far, at least for a moment there, they had a potential double hold from Pit. But Flush is starting to work his way over to Arch. It seems like he wants to try and keep, if, if not close enough to spot, at least be able to hear if there's going to be a push going through there. Sip and Kerrigan left, Flusher lining him up, almost going to get the double kill then, but JW with the AWP up in balcony, very open position, flick there, not actually going to hit, grenade on down to do a little bit of more damage, but uh, 10 seconds left now, and they've got to get this bomb planned in, and it looks like they're going to be successful as well, now with this pit position here from Kerrigan, definitely not to be underestimated. Yeah, and he puts himself in a position to spot JW as well, if JW decides to come out through pit, and JW, well, no, he's just going to go into short. Zipnix is gone, and Kerrigan soon to follow. Olaf Meister takes that fight any day of the week, no problem at all. And, and uh, well, I mean, an 11 4 finish here. Wow. Four question mark. And that is very rough for them. I mean, hmm. question mark's a CT side. It's not like C it's, it's a necessarily a weak CT side. They could run it back. It's just that they, I mean, with, if they were the pistol round, then we've got a really yeah, we've got game a match on our hands. Our hands. Yeah. That, that's it. But the, this is the problem, right? That's why you need four rounds. Because if you don't win that, you you have almost no buffer left, right? It'll, it it gets it gets a little bit too painful here. So I, I mean, overall, some very impressive plays from Fnatic. I think the only there were only really like two rounds where I can think of that that were. That were like the one v one where Flush ends up clutching it. That's that's not really like a big. That's not like necessarily question mark Mark's fault. That just was a good clutch by Flush, right? But then the the two holds on A where they end up like leaving the bomb in a weird position and they end up not coordinating the defense well enough. That is a problem. And they actually, I don't want to say they gave away two rounds, but there were two rounds they could have definitely won. No doubt. Well. Device takes the peak to mid here. I mean, standard approach here from question mark and this pistol. Nothing too crazy from them. Just device peaking mid to get some info. And then Cajun and Debris both playing from pit. So the defense on short, it will be solid. Although the Debris is changing it up for graveyard. So that triangle is set up here on the A side. Very passive hold here coming in on the B side as well. Zemnix holding far back in a position where he'll be able to fall back onto that side if they decide to rush through onto him. And Fnatic, it is all going to be about the rush. They've got five Kevlar, no utility. Nothing to work with here. Kerrigan is set up with that smoke. It goes out, but that was a very quick smoke. I mean, yeah. Zipnix didn't even hear steps at top banana when that smoke went out. So that's a, that's really interesting, actually. 
Th this is this shows you how on edge question mark are. I don't know if Crims would have thrown it in that sort of situation, right? He might have tried to hold on to it a little bit longer. It's one of the things where you've got to wonder, like, have they been practicing? Did they know a timing or something? That mm -hmm. Maybe that's what it was. But yeah, you're right. Now that it's gone, there's still 35 seconds left, and Fnatic are setting up for it. There is a third guy rotating in here. The TQM, they might be aware. Sip making a lot of noise here. Cajun device, Kerrigan all helping out. Fnatic running into a brick wall here at the B-bomb side, and that's not going to be very helpful. And if they don't win this round, it's a real chance the Danish team could be right back in this game, and we could have a very fun match on our hands, and that's going to be the end of it here. Very nearly a 10. Yeah, this I mean, it's device getting two kills, and Zipnik's not getting to take part. He got taken out immediately by Fnatic, but solid hold. Okay, then we got a match on our hands. Because question mark, that was that's the kind of round that will give them some confidence here. Solid pistol. They didn't have to fight too hard for it. They got an accurate read, and Fnatic just kind of ran into the blender. Good headshots. I mean, everything went question mark's way. So very little, you know, subtlety there. It's all about them shots, and in the end, the Danes managed to pull it off. So. Now they have to survive the Tech-9 rush. And again, though, Fnatic, look at this, just no utility whatsoever. No flashes, no smokes to make it easier. So this is all on question mark, just keeping their cool. If they get bum-rushed, they just need to keep their cool, not spray wildly. Just land the shots and uh, get the job done. A little bit worried about Device, though. He's about to have a lot of friends rushing at him. Oh, good smoke timing, though. Look at that double kill as well. Setting himself up for a failed flashbang. Was supposed to go the other way, and uh, maybe he would have tried to recommit. I'm glad it didn't work, though, because there's no reason to recommit once you're in a five versus three. This is not ideal for Kerrigan, though. He does manage to play the angle correctly. And a quick rotation over from Zipnix. But Kerrigan, for a moment there, could have got caught. If Fnatic had tried to rush right through into Arch, he was alone there. That could have got really nasty if three players for Fnatic could run over to the B site. Semler, uh, tell me. Mm. Who's going to win tonight, by the way? Aldo or McGregor? McGregor. Yeah, I'm on that team too. <laughs> oh, go let's fits right, bro. Yeah. I've got him to win as well. All right, well, um, <laughs> we do have a couple of pistols up, pistols upgrades here for Fnatic, but not much else. And uh, actually, a little bit of an aggressive push coming out here for Question Mark, just showing their dominance, establishing that. And uh, it's working out quite well at the moment as they get three kills and none are traded. JW, burst fire to really do anything against armor. And um, that's going to be an 11-7 scoreline here. Now, Fnatic will have rifles, and they need to do something about this. Um, question mark already have a lot of money because they haven't lost that many. This, that play to me is really key. That's, that's, that's question mark building their confidence and trying to rattle Fnatic. It's something that Nip like to do a lot as well in these kinds of guaranteed hard eco situations where they can just run in there and just, just stomp a little bit more on their opponents before the opponents actually get rifles. So it's that feel good, you know, <laughs> you know, pad the stats a little bit and uh, give yourself a pat on the back. And now Fnatic, they're going to be a little bit on the back foot. They've got the rifles. They're very light on nades. Only three flashes to work with to make it easier to get onto a site. Good good smoke count, though. So there are some options here for the Swedes yet. Not sure if Dennis Meister has actually made his way into apartments yet to clear that out. That might actually down to Olaf instead. And yeah, Olaf is going to start working his way in there. So they've been denied banana so far. Apartments getting a little bit closer to being under control. And now the fun begins here, because now Fnatic, once that bottom smoke clears once again, yeah, exactly, it turns into a bit of a guessing game. The Zipnik's hanging around. He still hangs around a challenge as well at top banana, but what are the nade counts looking like? Yeah, they still a smoke left smoke. on Zipnix. Still a smoke left on Zipnix. That is key. That's so important. And now Zipnix, it's all down to patience for him. How, how, how long can he hold on to that? Well, he's picking the corner all the time, so he can hold on to it forever at this point. Until they show themselves, he's probably not going to put it down. And in 35 seconds, they should be getting more and more sure that this is an A hit because they don't know that the bomb is down at a banana. Now, I think they might have realized that Sip's going to put up the smoke over at B. Carrigan with a huge double hit. Finally going to get down, but there's the smoke up here, so they have to wait for that to clear. Sip explained this one very well as well. B90 kill on Crims, and that's going to be the end of it. So this is this is a very smart way of playing for question mark side. Flusher, he's going to get the bomb plant and three people rotating in. He drops it. He's out in the open as well. Flashbang. They're actually a team flash for uh, the CT side, but it's going to work out just fine. So because he's at the corner of top banana, and he's just peeking it with his smoke in hand, right? So he's got almost no worries. Even though there's only 30 seconds left, and normally it's 30 seconds, if there's nobody, you're not seeing anyone banana, you're probably thinking they're setting up for an A hit, right? Mm -hmm. But he stays there. He has no reason not to. And that's it. Kerrigan gets the two kills in. Now, that's that's like the second part of it, right? Because if Kerrigan does go down, then suddenly Sip, even though he's got the smoke up, it doesn't matter because he doesn't have a secondary smoke for CT spawn, obviously, so he's still going to get flanked. So uh, just a, a great hold here from Question Mark. That was, that was some textbook stuff.
That was really, yeah, Kerrigan once again, just on the rotate. Device was there to back it. Olaf Meister, though, wasn't able to win that duel. That's where it could have got a little a little tricky for Zipmix. Instead, it's going to be KGB up in apartments, utterly failing a spray on Olaf Meister. That is a 100% kill that really needs to be picked up by Cajun. Yeah. So he's going to be kicking himself there. Had Olaf dead to right. So, but at least he gets a little bit of information. Olaf only had a Tech-9. So now they might have a little bit of an idea of what Fnatic are throwing at them. Quasi buys on the board, although JW does have the AK to work with. And it's still a decent nade count here on Fnatic, so they really can kind of go where they want. And it is going to be just the push into apartments here from Olaf. He's looking to just get that info, and he doesn't spot anybody. So now, now Fnatic, they need to make that decision. It's, got, it's getting down to that time where it is going to be the A setup, it looks like. Although that bomb is making its way back towards B. And if the bomb makes its way back towards B, they're really hoping to be able to get those Tech Nines into play and just bum rush the only man here defending, and that's Kerrigan with the AWP. Not the ideal weapon to have in this scenario either. It's all on this incendiary, and he's going to chuck that right on out. 30 seconds left now. And does he have support yet from Zipnix? Oh, Flusher got that kill. That would have been scary, but there's still a chance here. There's one guy wrapping around Archway as well. If they lose it, then it's just down to Pit. Nice shot from Device there. If he doesn't drop all of mine, so Dupree's all alone. Now Fnatic running into the meat grinder here, and it's going to be a triple for Dupree and a double for Device. And uh, I don't know. Fnatic had a lot of openings. Clear to us, they might not have been as clear to, to Fnatic then. Right. Um, that Molotov that goes up, I mean, it. Fnatic could have waited it out, but by the time they would have waited it out, there was a second man there for Kerrigan, and who knows what would have happened, so... And Zipnix had a Molotov of his own at that point as well. Oh, really? Well, yeah, he, would, he, he had rotated I into CT that. corner, so he was going to get that Molotov in there. It was going to get real hot and toasty over there on the B site, that's for sure. I mean, what is also hot and toasty right now is the uh, economy for question mark. It's starting to get a little out of hand. This is... It's past the, the easy mode, kind of easy back-to-back -back wins here for Fnatic. Now it's all about doing it the hard way. And while Dupree starts off strong, he takes out JW. Oh. Flush out right on the, the edge of that smoke. A perfect flash. It flashes all four Fnatic members. That bot took just a little bit of time, but he does get caught by Crims in the end. A lot of damage being dished out as well. That meant for a one bullet headshot there on Crims because he was low already. So still now four versus three, and they don't have to push. They don't have to take these fights. They can wait and just lure Fnatic into a pretty bad situation there. Nice Molotov device. Trying to recommit a little bit, and he's down to 30 health. Cajun gonna go down. Don't, uh, no reason for TQM to get this one up. Sees the gun barrel though, and Device is gonna take the kill on Olaf. Yeah, really easy shot there for Device with that gun barrel to judge. And now with 45 seconds left, it's still a man advantage here for question mark. Kerrigan can't rotate off that B site though until the bomb is spotted. And Flusher knows this, he's starting to rotate back. Bit of a tricky situation for Fnatic though, because they don't have a smoke, they have a single flash grenade. So if Kerrigan allows them onto this site, it's going to be really tough. Does Zipnix rotate back as well? He's still hanging out over here on the A site. Dennis yeah. is going to be looking to pick him off. And there's the pop flash out, but Zipnix wins it. And now it's all on Flusha, 1v3. But luckily for him, there's only one man on this site. So it's just a duel that he needs to win here. He needs to get the entry onto the site. And Kerrigan, he's going to be communicating to his teammates now. Yep, B site, Flusha's here, and Flusha gets the kill. Nine seconds left, and he'll get the bomb plant. He will be successful here, and uh, see if he can clutch a 1v3. That would be very, very impressive. He's out, and he's no idea. He knows where one player is, but I don't think he's any clue where the second one is. He's walking in with his back turned, and he's about to die as well. Device right on the edge, and that's going to be TQM picking up the round. A nice, a nice attempt. I, I would have done this differently if I was Fnatic. Mm -hmm. So Dennis takes the fight first in Archway. Mm -hmm. I would have I would have probably said, okay, our chance to win this is Flusher winning the initial fight against Kerrigan. If he does that and Dennis is still in Archway, that means whoever rotates in from A is now going to get flanked by Dennis, and we have a really good 2v2 on our hand. Whereas if you do it the other way, and even if Dennis takes that fight, then you still got to have Kerrigan and Flusher. Like, you still need Flusher to win the fight. Either way, Flusher has to win the fight, right? That's like, so it becomes like a bottleneck in tactic if you if you let Dennis fight first. I don't understand why they would do that. Rather leave Dennis behind and um, and then have him like a backup once you get into a 2v2. Well, this is a tactical pause coming in here from Fnatic. So they, and what's interesting about this is that, I mean, they do it right before the big buy round. We've been seeing teams all day long, North American teams, you know, taking that pause before an eco round. And apparently the reason for that is that they want to have that eco round, that time of the eco round to discuss or to, or if they second guess the decision of the, ta of the tactical pause. Like the conclusion that they came to in the tactical pause, they want to leave that up to question for that eco round before committing to it in the, in the buy round. 
Now, it sounds that a little sounds backwards like some to really me. dodgy logic. <laughs> yeah, me. like it sounds really backwards to me. But I wanted to get your two cents on that, Anders. Yeah, no, I I think that's a stupid way of thinking. <laughs> um, I, it is really odd when you try and like wrap your head around it. Right, let's put it this way: What information could you possibly gain during that round that would like make you question what you were doing? I I don't. Like I, I I'm not, I don't. Why would you want to let doubt creep in at any point? Yeah, it's just like you know, actually just make the call, apply the call, whether it's a good one or a bad one, go into it and try and try yeah, and get that you, confidence rather than. You kind of do need to operate on the assumption that you're you're going to win it and this is a good idea. It's hard hard wow. to play this game if you're going to be doubting yourself. For Fnatic right now, you know there is a little bit of doubt. That's why they call for that pause, and this is where you know all eyes are on Flusha. They don't, you know, Pronax has been removed from the roster. Dennis comes in, more firepower. There's been some discussion as to whether that was the right call or not, if Fnatic actually needed more firepower. But it's all, all, all the weight is on Flusha's shoulders at this point to, to make the right calls. He has to lead this team now when it's not easy. When question mark, they have everything going their way so far on their CT half. And this is exactly the sort of position that, that Pronax used to be very, very good at uh, calling here. They run into the Molotov as well. Oh, it's a double kill! Swedish barbecue is coming up, and it's going to be Krooms, Flusher, and Dennis left. Uh, what is that? Dennis finally taking down Sip, and they are going to run into the B-bomb site here, but Kerrigan is still in the back lines, and as they're slowing down this push due to the flashbangs that are coming out, it's going to get tougher because backup is coming in as well. Cajun runs right into a headshot. Great round from Dennis so far. He's got the double kill, but now they know where he is, and Kerrigan can still put a stick in the wheel of Fnatic here. This is a round they need. It's been no rounds in the second half for them so far. They need to pick one up at one point here. Device winning the fight against Dennis, and now it's a 2-1-2. Two -two. Device going to go down, and Kerrigan, he can't stop the bomb from running into A, but he sees Krim sprays, and Krim's is trying to hide, and he's going to win that fight. Nice timing, and that will be Fnatic finally with a round. Exactly. And Kerrigan, I mean, you have to give it to Kerrigan. He did everything right. He stayed alive behind the new boxes. He didn't allow for them to press onto that B site. So long as he's alive, he's there to do the job. A little bit of a lucky break there for Dupree that uh, that incendiary managed to, call, uh, to catch those two members. But I think the, the big thing there is that is Zipnix rotating into CT so openly like that, just running flat out. Yeah. Took a bullet to the face, and that pretty much threw the whole round up in the air for question mark. At that point, they're, they're very vulnerable, and Fnatic, Dennis in particular, did a fantastic job of exploiting that. Just catching out rotator after rotator. So there we go. Fnatic, they've broken the streak. Now we have to see can they chain rounds together because it's going to be necessary. Kerrigan takes a fight straight up, spots some players there, doesn't spot the bomb, but at least does a little bit of damage to JW and he takes out Crims. And what a shame for Kerrigan because that was a great flashbang that came in and he couldn't really capitalize on it to 100%. So yeah, I would say Fnatic a good trade for them even if JW took a bit of damage. So, a minute left, and uh, if we look at Sip, he's got one smoke left, and that's pretty much it. So now he's... and this time, unlike earlier, where he was peeking in the corner, this time he doesn't know what's happening at on Banana, so he's, now it has to be sort of like purely instinctual from him here. He's got some backup, luckily, now in uh, Sip, who's also... Oh, sorry, who's that? Sip and yeah, Device. Zip, yeah, The Device actually out of grenades, too, so yeah, pure instinct here from the CT side. And Zip, he just puts down that smoke, so it'll clear probably with 20-something like seconds left on the clock. And while Fnatic, they aren't going to wait around that long. There's a CT smoke, and they spot a device immediately. Not sure if he spots that man on the edge of the smoke, however, and he's going to miss the flick shot. Flush that comes out of nowhere and blindsides him, and Zipnix can't get the kill either. Huge play here from Flush, a two, three kills total, but two on the B site, and the bomb gets planted for Fnatic. Just like that, in the blink of an eye, the round is over. Question mark, they fall short. Well, wow. look at this. Olaf Meister can actually ruin Dupree's day. Yeah, they want to take these rifles away. There's Olaf with a nice crouch peek oh, in. He has a headshot on Cajun as well. That's going to clean it up. Fnatic only losing Crimson in that engagement. That's going to put them at 13 to money for question mark. Well, not looking too good. It's all gone. It's all gone. All of that bank in two rounds evaporated. And well, you know, they have enough to go for some some options here if they want to drop some pistols but they shouldn't be full buying and we see that now question mark i mean dupree he had a little bit of money he goes for kevlar and a 5-7 cajun b upgrades to the deagle but they have to eat a round of eco to the teeth here question mark and that's going to put Fnatic up onto 14 rounds which is way too close to comfort way too close for comfort rather so question mark we've also been doubting them their mental game their ability to withstand and towards the end of the half they've started to, to show their weaknesses now it's whether they can actually battle back in the next round. That's going to be the big moment here. 
It's not done yet, of course, as a CSGO. Pistols are pretty strong, but it's going to take some big shots here. And Cajun, well, that'll do. Oh, my, you're gone just okay. like that. Juan Diga's showing up. Fine, Cajun. I mean, if you're going to be like that. <laughs> Now Dupree sneaking on out. Is he going to find the good timing? He spots one guy down there, looks for a headshot. Doesn't want to commit to it too much, which is probably a good idea. Don't want to risk anything. 45 seconds, only two people holding this A-bomb side. If Fnatic push now, that, that should be the, the round in their favor. Dupree is holding close here with his 5-7. I mean, once he fires, they're going to fire right back. There it is. He does some damage, but gets sprayed right through. And now Cajun has a pretty big task on his hands. And device with the USP, he's kicking himself. He wishes he had anything else. He does spot the rotation over towards the B site. This is perfect. It couldn't be better. If Fnatic commit to this, they go to the B site. There's currently two defenders there. Cajun gets spotted in pit. There's some info. And Zip makes he's rotating into construction. He just might barely have made it. There's the pop flash. Crims turns away. He hears it bounce off the wall. And Kerrigan's there to pick up the first kill. But now they know where he's playing from. Still, T kill comes in. Dennis decides to help him out. Six seconds left. Do they get the bomb in time? JW yeah. have got this. And yes, two seconds left on the clock. And Cajun doesn't want to go for it. He picks up an AWP and runs away instead. So, wow, that team kill as well. And because Dennis was so low, that could have been an awful position there. A little bit more time. If he stays alive in that corner another two seconds, they waste another two seconds trying to look for the bomb, and it's done. The round is over. So, yeah, that was a, that was a scary round for Fnatic. That is, well, yeah. That'll fire a question mark, question mark up, rather, for the next one. What a shot from Cajun to start off, though. Yeah. Just all of, bam, gone. Didn't even see him. And that's, uh, this is a pretty good save, although Dennis looks like he's close enough. He might have spotted it, but not enough time to get in there. And, well, that's going to be an AWP saved here for Device, which is a fantastic save. That's going to that's gonna work wonders here for the question mark economy. And they have the full nades. Good rifles, everything that they need here. Now, Fnatic, they're going. They're not going to go with an AWP on anybody. Instead, it's just full AKs across the board. And while this is it, Anders, this is the big round of this half, pretty much. If Fnatic win it, it's pretty much map point and the first map in the bag for them. Question mark. It's all about just showing that mental fortitude. Can they get another streak going? Can they get the six rounds in a row? And here we go. Cajun B boosted up on top of roof on short. He's going to pick up the first man. He loses his support. He loses his teammate. Debris is gone, and it's just fair trade all across the board. Fnatic now. They have the advantage. They can swarm onto this site. Oh, almost with the timing there is device, but now it's a full three-on-three -three retake, and this is not going to be so easy. They have shown up, and they've got a little bit of grenades left as well on the Danish side, but they need this round. Otherwise, it's going to slip so far to their hands, and Sip actually caught sleeping a little bit there. I thought he could maybe spot him up on the graveyard um, railing, but not going to be quite the case now. Carrigan moving a little bit closer here. Flashbang is perfect, and Crims is going to be gone. A kill on Sip is going to make things more tricky, and that bomb down in a great position. All of Meister picking up another frag at 25th, and it's going to be down to Device. He runs away, trying to save that AWP, and you're right. It is going to be map point here for Fnatic. And just a total collapse. Cajun getting caught. Dupree not too effective in this round, unfortunately. Him just getting caught out like that at the beginning of short throws Cajun's position up in the air, even if Cajun gets two kills out of it. It's just too quick. And Fnatic, this, they, it, where they were in position to just pounce if they got an entry or, or not, that bomb was so close to short that they were able to just rush up onto the site, take advantage of that huge hole that they created in the, in the Danish defense. So, four spy coming out now from question mark. And while Fnatic, they don't even need to really change anything up. They're going to go straight up. Banana Zipnix holding pretty far back. Wants to hold on to his nades as long as possible here and not really give them too much of an opening. But Fnatic know that uh, Question Mark are playing scared at this point or safe. They're just pressing forward everywhere on the map. All of us bought a Sonoff shotgun. I mean, this is this is ridiculous. Usually it's JW you see with these kinds of shenanigans. It says something about the mental state of, of Fnatic right here, doesn't it? Like, yeah. he, they feel very confident that they've, they've got the the right amount of pressure that's going to break TQM and at 15-10 they have I mean they've got a bit of a buffer but it's not that big either I mean if they start losing now Fnatic this could go to overtime I love to see this position from JW as well calling for the boost because question mark keep putting a man behind new boxes time and time again so he's just waiting here he's like okay if my teammates they pressure a little bit question mark might fall to the back of the site boom I'll get a free kill and then the site is ours pretty much but they decide not to not to wait around and it's going to be Fnatic pressing up to top mid, and once again, they're going to be setting up perhaps to just apply the pressure on Arch. There are options here for uh, Fnatic, although with 26 seconds left, not a whole f not a whole lot. 
Good shot from device. Sip spraying with the Famas. Going to connect on Flusher. Crims well and um, Fnatic. Not looking too good in this round. I think Olofmeister even picked up an AK and gave the Sword of Shoot to Flusher. So yep. I'm not sure what that was about. I would say that's a big risk. Uh, but um, I would say that was... Um, I mean, there, there seemed like there was a plan. And then there were too many plans. If that makes any sense. Because then you send the two guys up to Arch. 26 seconds left. That bomb was going back and forth in Banana. Not quite sure what they wanted to do. They weren't given a target to pick from Question Mark, which is also something, you know, kudos to Question Mark for not peeking, yeah. for not giving that kill to JW and uh, Banana. But they just ran that clock down too far. And now, yeah, Flusha, he's going to have to keep his cool here. Oh, Fnatic not buying in this round. I, I could have, I would have guessed that they would have. Seems like, okay, Dennis will upgrade to Kevlar. A couple Tech Nines, a Deagle. They would have had to have enough to have gone for three AW, uh, three AKs, and they had the AWP, so it would have been just, I think, Dennis with Tech Nine armor, but not feeling it just yet. And I mean, they've got they've got the the extra rounds to go for this kind of buy, and probably securing themselves a buy in the last couple of rounds, like an extra buy at the end. So maybe it would have worked out the same way. Losing Flusher early on is not great, but we'll see if JW could find an opening with that AWP. No, it's just a straight bomb rush approach here. With the Tech Nines, they will be a lot, there will be a lot of pressure on Cage, but he holds his own. He's got the help of Dupree as well, holding close short. And Dupree, man, he just goes in brave. He's looking for that other kill. Nice dunk nade onto him, just drops him down to 50, and JW lashes out with the AWP. But, you know, he's the last man, excuse me, last man alive. And at this point, it's kind of just like roam around on the map, see if he can't find another pick, make it a little bit more expensive here for question mark. But Well, yeah, so the money for the Danish side now, right, really doesn't matter, right? Because they're not going to, like, you know, die and and, and, yeah, and, and eco, save. right? Yeah. yeah, obviously. So, so they might. So that's actually from question mark's point of view. Apart from the fact that they obviously don't want to like lose the one v four, they should eventually go and hunt the mm -hmm. JW in that position. It's going to be a buy this time for the Fnatic team. It's fifteen twelve. Right now, this tastes like overtime until Fnatic shows something different. There is there is a chance. For me, it's like that's up to question mark to give it to uh, to Fnatic. Really want to see um, Fnatic just keep that pressure up at this point. Olafmeister looked like he wanted to take a little bit of a battle in Banana, but he eats a double nade actually to the face. 44 HP left on him. Oh, sip. There it is, this game. And there's the shot. Perfectly done there by Olaf. Yeah, it looked like he was swinging out quite far to get that peak. It wasn't like a quick, like, you know, jiggle. It was more like, a, yeah, a bit of a wide angle he was swinging at. Olaf is going to miss that. No, more pixels than Olaf needed. Well, we've got the hole up in apartments here. Molotov goes the other way, so Cajun's still able to maintain his position, but his uh, backup there has been rotated out. So if they end up going apartments and he's alone up there, I don't think that's a favorable position. Apartments is great if you've got a teammate there, but not so much otherwise. The free spraying through Olaf. Sorry, Dennis there. How is he still alive? That looked uh, good. Now over at the B-bomb site. Got just a solitary Carrigan without any grenades. Backup is coming in though quick from Device, and he's not got any grenades either. This is going to be a really tough hold. I think Fnatic have got exactly the right answer right now. Yeah, they're just going to go bum rushing in there. AWP and an M4A1. That's all there is here to stop them. Good incendiaries here keeping Carrigan dancing at second oranges. Device hoping to get lucky with a shot through, and he will manage to pick off JW. Flusha still waiting there, trying to go for the wall bang, and somehow that shot missed. Kerrigan is gone, and Flusha hits the HE. And with 10 seconds left on this clock, Fnatic get the bomb plant. Man advantage, two man advantage in the hold. And well, Cajun lands a great shot onto Flusha to start clearing out Banana. But there's still three players alive here for Fnatic on the site, and this is so difficult now for Dupree, especially Olaf Meister with that AWP behind New Box him off, and it's just going to be down to Cajun now. He's caught in the triangle. First peek comes through. He takes out Dennis. No reason for the rest of them to peek. They're going to run down this bomb, and Olaf... Is he going to hit that point blank shot? No, he will not. Cajun just goes charging through. There's the smoke. And he just has to hold down Mouse One. He has no choice. If he takes this fight, he loses. And Crims will snuff him anyway. 16-12 finish here on the first map for Fnatic. And that is going to be it. The start the Swedes were looking for. Yeah, what a sick game from all of Meister. Really showing up here on Inferno. Um, that was just, that was a mad game. And, and you see the difference how much uh, TQ Omi has struggled to get into the B-bomb site and how good it was for Fnatic, right? Because they wait all the way until all the grenades are gone. Then they smoke off CT spawn and which is whoever is playing on the site ends up being just isolated, right? They just have two different ways of holding it. Look at Crims, the way that he holds it. He's constantly holding spools, constantly challenging that smoke, whereas 
on the Danish side, on that B side, it's like Kerrigan behind second oranges, behind new boxes, a bit more passive, allowing Fnatic to get up onto the site and really directly challenge. I mean, it really didn't work out for um, the Danish team as far as the hold is concerned. Fnatic just too good, and that's exactly what had to, to not happen here for, you know, Dupree, Device, and the yeah. rest of their ilk. Well, uh, we will have a bit of a breakdown of that particular map from the uh, homies over at the couch. So, um, Alex, please take it away. Yeah.